This is a follow-on to my video about bulb-stabilized Veen bridge oscillators. I built a board for the circuit, and I've also explored some ways to improve amplitude stability. Here's the circuit. Its job is to produce a pure sine wave, and you can see that there's an incandescent bulb that forms part of its negative feedback loop. My previous video goes into a lot of detail about what bulbs to use, what op amps to use, and where to get them. I'll put a link to that video below. It also explains why gain stabilization is necessary and how it works. The amplitude variation you're seeing here is the chief problem with the circuit, at least the chief problem that I've had and many others. You can see it well if you zoom out like this. This problem is sometimes called squeaking or bouncing. And one of the things I was trying to do is to figure out ways to reduce or eliminate it. In general, I still don't know how to do that, but I have a board that's working well now. And here it is. My motivation for building the board was that I found that some components like resistors with very fine leads, they, they didn't make very good contact in the breadboard and they'd bounce around and cause the circuit to jump. And that made it hard to figure out what was going on. But I don't think that was ever the fundamental problem. In the previous video, I talked about running with an amplitude that was high enough to be near clipping, but not clipping. And I think that does help because it, it reduces the amount that the amplitude can grow. But I also think it helps for a second reason, and that's running the bulb a little bit hotter. A good rule of thumb seems to be to run the bulb at something like 15% or more of its rated voltage value RMS, um, at least keeping that within reason. But once again, that doesn't eliminate the problem all the time. I also tried reducing the capacitor values in order to increase the frequency. I thought if the frequency got higher, then the bulb couldn't change temperature fast enough to be affected by the frequency. But in my experiments, this actually made the problem worse. So I tried the opposite, and I increased the value of the capacitors to reduce the frequency of oscillation to something like 470 hertz. And this helped a lot, both on the breadboard and on the board that I built. I find now that the amplitude stays stable across a wide variety of amplitudes that are selected by the potentiometer on the board. I wish I knew how to make it work with higher frequencies, but I still don't. But at least I can show you the board in action, and you can see how well it's working. And here we are. We're using the ADALM2000 and Scopy, and this is its oscilloscope. The, uh, the orange line is channel 1, and that's the output of the oscillator. And the uh, Channel 2, the purple line, is, is the voltage drop across the, the bulb. And those are the things that should be in a 1 to 3 ratio. And you can do the math below. You can see the statistics, and, and they are. And so it's uh, working pretty well. And uh, I guess I'll show you the window settings real quick. So that's channel 1. That's channel 2. And we'll, we'll turn them off. So one of the things that's good is to perturb the circuit, which I can do just by touching like the resistors and the caps, the leads, and that changes the frequency a little bit and makes it jump. And so you can see how fast it recovers. And I'll, I guess I'll do that again. And um, so you can see that no sustained amplitude oscillation is setting in. I'm running right now uh, with a output level of about 1.6 volts RMS. And that's probably an easy thing for the VM2K to measure. Let's go ahead and take a look at the spectrum analyzer view. So I'll stop that and uh, go to the spectrum analyzer and run it. And so this is our fundamental frequency here, around 470-ish um, hertz. And you can see that the M2K isn't really seeing much of any other harmonics. And uh, let me turn the cursors on, and you can get some some objective measurements here. We might have this. I don't know. This might be set to measure dBV. Let's look at the sweep, so that you can see that. Yeah, it's measuring dBV now, which is also my oscilloscope's um, default. Oops. I didn't, yeah, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do. How about that? So now with the cursors on, um, you can see that the magnitude towards what little other frequency spikes we see as being measured as minus 57 dB, which if you can believe it is very good. Um, I, I'm not convinced that I have any equipment that can measure, uh, that, that has the dynamic range to measure anything much beyond 48 decibels. But anyway, um, M2K obviously thinks this is a very clean sine wave and yeah, looks good. So let's go back to the oscilloscope and uh, run that again. And let me grab my screwdriver, and I can change the amplitude of the 
of the output just by adjusting the trim pot. Now it jumps as I'm doing that. So now I'm turning it down. And uh, so we let it settle. And so now what's the RMS output is less than a volt, about 0.8 volts, and let it jump a little bit. And you can see how, how fast it recovers. It's interesting to try to turn it way down. So I'll go even farther. Because here, here you'd think it might get less stable. So yeah, so now it's taking a while to recover, but it, but it does. And what's the level? The RMS is less than half a volt. So doing pretty well. And so now let's um, let's turn the volume, or not the, the turn, turn the amplitude up. So I'll get get kind of get ready for that by changing the vertical scale. So now I'm moving the trim pod in the other direction and going up, 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 and the lamp is just starting to glow. And so now we've got an RMS output of 3.8 volts. You can see what it looks like when I disturb it. I think it's more stable, actually. We can go even higher. And uh, no, I haven't I adjusted the second channel to match. Uh, maybe I should do that. Let's see. So get that back down to the same two volts for division as the other. And so, so now, and it's also measuring the wrong one. There. So now our RMS output is um, 6.3 volts, and the lamp is glowing noticeably, which is fun to see. I could probably increase it even more, um, but I'll let's see, let me just tap it another couple of times, and you can see it's very stable. It's as the lamp is a little bit warmer, the stability increases, but it's working well um, across all of these different amplitude ranges. So I think the next thing I'll do is connect it to my Siglent SDS 1104XE oscilloscope, um, mainly so that we can get a look at the, what its FFT thinks about the cleanliness of the signal. I really don't have any reason to think that it's more able to show that than the M2K, because it's only an 8-bit scope. But it'll be interesting to see what it looks like. But first, here's a quick picture of the board with the scopey connections showing and with the bulb glowing quite brightly. This is with an output voltage of between 9 volts and 10 volts RMS. That's about as much as I turn it up. By the way, the supply voltage is plus 18.5 and minus 18.5. I'll try running it with lower voltages too. So here, here we are looking at the output with the Siglent oscilloscope. The setup similar to what we started with with Scopey. The yellow line is channel 1, and that's the uh, output. And the voltage drop across the bulb is the purple line, channel 2. And once again, we have statistics below showing the 3 to 1 ratio that we expect. So everything looks looks pretty normal. Let's look at, look at the uh, FFT results using the, the, the Siglent. So I'm going to turn measurement off. And then we need to zoom in or like this to give the FFT what it needs to work with and switch to the FFT. And it shows this table. And we can see that the uh, there's a second harmonic that's about now oh, 47 dB down. So that's looking a little bit worse than what, what Scopey showed. But I let, again, this is an 8-bit scope, so I'm not confident that it shows much of anything useful below with more than 48 dB difference. And there may be a little bit of noise induced by the, by the ground lead of the oscilloscope as well. And uh, so that's, that's that. And so we can go back to the oscilloscope. And like before, I can touch the circuit and we can watch it, um, you know, attempt to recover, which it does. And so I touch the circuit and make it make it sort of bounce. And then you can see it get back to the the amplitude that it should be. So I'm going to turn it way up. And I'll turn channel 2 off. We don't need it for anything. Let's go all the way to the point of clipping. And then back down a little bit. All right, so now it started to clip. The bulbs lit not brightly exactly, not like if you were using it as a light bulb, but it's definitely lit. So I go back down to about here. Let's uh, get a measurement. So the RMS voltage is about 9.57. And once again, let's let's see what the 
VFFT shows. See if there's any real difference. So now we have, um, what, 19 plus 33.8. Call it 19 plus 34, just for easy math. So that's showing a 53 dB difference at a high amplitude for whatever that's worth. And let's go back and uh, let's try turning it way, way, way down. Let's try to go even lower. Oh, that might have stopped oscillating. Okay, that's back to trying to settle down. And RMS of 161. So let me tap the circuit and let's see how well it recovers. I think it's just barely, barely able to oscillate. So you can see it takes it a long time to recover. And once again, let's turn the measurement off and look at an FFT. I think that's what I want. And at this very low amplitude, we're seeing a difference of, oh, approximately 70, let's call it 72 minus 17 for easy math. And that's 55 decibels difference at this very low level. Um, but you can see it's pretty, pretty stable. Let's see if that recovers. A little bit of bouncing there. I mean, if I just tap the table, I, I can make it bounce a little bit, but you can see the amplitude's really quite stable even at this very, very low level. And the uh, FFT is showing good performance across the whole amplitude range. Here's a capture that shows the circuit starting up from power on. I think it's pretty interesting. You can see right at the beginning that the gain is very high because the yellow part of the envelope is much, much larger than the, the purple part. And, uh, and then over time it settles down. This is 50 milliseconds per division. So you're seeing about the first 0.65 seconds or so after power on. And it's you can see it towards the end of that, it's beginning to stabilize it. After uh, another few fractions of a second, it would be stable. This is the system running at a power supply of plus five and minus five volts. We, we were at plus 18.5 and minus 18.5. I had to use the trim pot to turn the amplitude down to about two, vol two volts RMS, but the circuit seems to be working very well even at this low voltage. If I touch it, you can see it recover. And, uh, and once again, we can take a quick look at the uh, FFT. And it looks like we're seeing a difference of oh, 49 dB or something like that. So not too different than what it was before. So it kind of looks like the circuit works pretty well, even at plus minus five. I think I'll end here. I like my new board, but to use its output for something more serious, it would probably be a good idea to buffer it um, using a separate op ramp instance. Anyway, what have we learned? So the, the oscillator is working well. It's stable across the amplitude and power supply ranges that are quite wide, but why? I do think that running the bulb at 15% or more of its rated RMS voltage helps, but that wasn't the thing that made the fundamental difference. Lowering the frequency is what really produce the stability. I wish I had a good explanation for this. I guess it's hard to make bulb stabilization perfect. I'm sure it doesn't help that the specifications for the bulbs aren't particularly detailed and, and maybe the bulb manufacturing isn't stable over time and the bulbs are getting rarer and rarer. Diode stabilization is much easier. I made a video on that. I'll put a link below. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found this to be interesting.